So, welcome everybody. Good morning to all of you to the last day of the DEFCON. Let me introduce you to Simon and Lucas. They're going to talk about a very interesting workshop about cell Linux and how to write the policy. So, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yes. Okay, cool. So, my name is uh, Simon Sekide. I'm a solution architect with Red Hat. I work in the federal DOD space. And Lukas is yeah. a policy maintainer. So what we're going to do is walk you through how to write SLinux policy. This is pretty much a hands-on class. So um, if you have a Windows laptop, we have a recycle bin over there. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we're going to pass out some USB keys so you guys can follow along. So this is actually split into two parts. We have the boring theory, and then we actually have the hands-on, which is, which should be the takeaway for most of you guys, because I, you know, all this other stuff you can probably Google. So uh, whenever you're ready, we can get started. Now. Sorry. Now or ready. <laughs> You've been ready a long time. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So the materials are available here, but other than that, um, we have a few USB keys. You can pass them along and just install. It's basically an RPM that we'll be using to write the, the policy. So I'll start uh, here, and then I'll skip two rows here. Just pass it along. And they don't have viruses on them. <laughs> sure. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, sorry. So the people online can probably get this right. Yeah. It's not found? What am I doing wrong? The link is dead. The link is dead? Oh, come on. Well, at least you have the USB keys. Maybe the code works. All right, let me skip that slide. So, uh, uh, it will work on Fedora 24 and 25. 25. Yeah, 24 yeah. is okay. Okay, so it will not work on 25, right? It will work, it also will work on, on 25. 25. It will work on Rawhide. All right, so while you're copying that, uh, let me bore you with the theory part, and then, you know, once everybody has the RPM on there or the tarball on their laptops, then, you know, we'll get started. All right, so here's the agenda. Basically, we're going to tell you how SLinux works, what SLinux policy actually is, uh, the M4 macro language which we've been using since RHEL 4, and then the new policy language, which you'll be seeing shortly. And uh, finally, we'll talk about custom modifications and go through the writing policy example. So, I mean, a lot of you guys have heard, you know, people always say, what is SC Linux? I think that's the wrong question you should be asking. The, qu the right question is, what does SC Linux do for me? A lot of people forget that the SE in SC Linux stands for security enhanced. So think of it as an added layer of security to whatever you have on your system. In the old model, prior to SC Linux, we had the discretionary access control, which was the user, user groups and others. And then with SC Linux, you basically have a mandatory access control that adds an extra label to your discretionary access control. So you have your users, you read, sorry, you read, write, and execute permissions, and then you have the SLinux labels that kind of are appended onto those. Uh, interesting slide, <laughs> right? So this is what makes or 
makes people feel SNNX is complicated. But in reality, it's not, you know? The default policy is to deny. If a rule exists, then whatever you're doing will be allowed. This just basically tells you what happens when a user space, user space process makes a system call, you know? It goes through a few checks and balances, and then you'll either get an allow or deny access. So it's either or, you know? And also depending in which more, what mode you're in. So if you're in enforcing mode, default is to deny. If you're in permissive mode, uh, access will be granted, but then the error message will be logged. All right. So as I indicated earlier, you know, added layer of security. What is this added layer of security? If you've ever done an ls-l, you'll notice that there's a dot at the end of your output. That is an, an SLNX attribute. And basically what happens is if you run the get r command, as, as this example shows, it will actually show you what the SLNX context is, what the full label is. So you have your, we'll break this down further. You have your system, you have your user, you have your role, and then you have your type. And at the end, you have the security level or sensitivity level. In targeted policy, which is the default policy that we ship, you pretty much ignore the user, the role, and only focus on the type. Here's another example of how to get the SLNX context. You can run stats on the Etsy password. I think if you're running rel 7 or rel 6, I think you have to add a flag onto the stat command to get this. But <coughs> other than that, it will list, uh, not only will it list your discretionary access controls, it will also list your mandatory access controls. And then the, you've probably seen the flag at the bottom, ls-z, capital Z, to get you uh, the same context. Process labeling. You know, SLNX is all about labels. You've heard Dan talk about it. You've had Miroslav talk about it. You've had Lukas talk about it. Always about labels. Labels on everything. Processes, devices, files, everything. This is an example of Apache, the Apache process and the type. So when you start Apache, it technically should end up as HTTPD underscore T. All right, I've pretty much covered a bit of this, but we'll go into detail. Quick reminder, you have your user, your role, your type, and the sensitivity. Unless you're dealing with MLS, multi-level security, or multi-category security that are enhanced versions of policy, just focus on the type. T, underscore T is all you look at. Otherwise, things get, get a bit crazy. Uh, in multi-category security, we look at roles and users. In MLS, we look at everything plus the sensitivity levels, and there's a little more to that. You have your categories in the sensitivity levels, top secret, secret, and so forth. But again, that's outside uh, this workshop. Our basic rules have allow, don't audit, and some audit to allow rules. We'll talk about those later. And never allow rules are usually shipped by distributions. You will not see any never allow rules because um, they're turned off by default in, in Fedora. Here are a few examples. Uh, an allow rule. Allow a user to read uh, bin T, any, any you know, program file. Or don't audit CCST writing to program files. Or audit to allow SSH to open files in SSH home. I'll hopefully by the end of this uh, workshop, you'll be able to understand how you can read this stuff or look at this stuff with a few of the tools we have. This goes to my next slide. I mean, this talk is going to get a bit technical, but my take or my ask for you guys is to do everything you can 
to remember SE search. Without SE search, I wouldn't be able to read policy. I don't know about these two guys, Miroslav or Lukas, but this actually helps break down a better understanding of what it is that, a, that an object or a type is doing. This is a clear example. You're doing, you want to find out, you know, what Apache can do, or if Apache can read Apache temp files. And it will actually tell you Apache, this is what Apache will, can do if presented with an Apache temp file. It will, it can do an IOCTL, it can read, it can do a get header, it can lock, it can execute. It can execute without doing a transition and it can also open the file. So when you run SE search, I haven't memorized the flags, but A is usually all. S is the source, T is the target, uh, C is the class, and P is the permission. So if you're ever... So I mean, uh, A, capital A is allow, so we are trying to find just the allow rules. I've never looked at the man page. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's another example. So T, find the transition uh, rules, mm -hmm. you know, you know, same concept. Now, you can also look for all don't audit rules. Just remove the T and, da and do a dash dash don't audit. So if you ever want to know if uh, a file is allowed or if something it's doing is not kosher, run a C search uh, to actually see what types are allowed or denied by uh, the executing domain. So where do these rules come from? Anybody, anybody know? They come from space. They, they come from space. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually from the, the SC Linux policy packages. So when you download an SLNX policy package, it will ship or it will install base, what we call base policy. So we have, you have the base policy, but then we have all these layered products. We have OpenStack that ship their own policy. We have uh, containers that ship their own policy, you know, OpenShift and so on and so forth. So if something isn't in base policy, the chances are it's probably shipped as an independent policy package. I, I believe I covered this piece. All right, so when we talk about base policy, uh, I guess what's missing on this slide is the .pp file because if you compile the type enforcement file, which is denoted by the .te, the file context file, which is the .fc, and the interface file, which is .if, you get the .pp file. Type enforcement file is basically what is the heart of the policy. It's, it's what defines what the policy does. File context is the paths the policy has access to. The interface file, think of it as a registry or a, or a reference uh, guide to you know, certain macros and uh, attributes that, can, that are part of the, the actual policy. So, you know, like I indicated, our base policy contains components for kernel, system D. Basically, any package we ship should have uh, a policy package or should be confined, uh, if you've heard that term. And I, I'm to rephrase, we do not ship policy for third-party components. So you're probably in this workshop because you have packages, third-party packages you want to write policy for. And that's the whole purpose of this exercise. We'll show you how you can do that and then basically submit it to uh, Lukash or Miroslav and hopefully get it included in the base policy. And, or if you're adventurous, uh, you could submit it upstream and uh, again, they're the decision makers. All right, so if you look at a if, if you, if, let's go back. If you pull down um, the SC Linux policy uh, get, get tree, basically if you, and you, you know, this is what you'll see. You'll see the 
every file has those three types or those three uh, uh, distinctions. You have the file context, the interface file, the, the, type, uh, the type enforcement file. So there are always three uh, files for each one. And today with the M4 macro, this is what it looks like. This is what a, a TE file looks like, a type enforcement file. A lot of complicated stuff, but believe me, it's getting easier. You know, you don't need to memorize any of this stuff. Um, again, I, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, stop me, because, you know, I could talk all day. And this is an example of a file context, a .fc file. Again, it basically it's defining that the path, user share, W3C, markup validator, you know, everything under that uh, directory will be labeled W3C validator content underscore T with the uh, sensitivity level. And this is an interface file. So the interface file basically defines attributes um, as a po so basically the, the whole objective of the interface file is so that you don't have to type um, you know, you, you kind of cut down the lines you want in your policy file. So I could type a lot of, uh, you know, the, um, like for example, the MySQL domain trans basically allows MySQL, uh, sorry, when you execute MySQL QD exec T, it will transition to the MySQL QD type. You know, so it's just MySQL domain trans and so on and so forth. I guess we didn't include where they can find the definitions for these, but you know. And M4, M4 macro is pretty much what you've seen. I mean, M4 has been around a long time. If you ever started using SendMail and had to configure SendMail from scratch, that is M4. You may not have known it then, but same concept here. And uh, pretty much this is what it looks like, you know. So um, when, when you look at policy and you have something that says read write files pattern, then that means it's, it's allowing the domain, um, the object, and the, the object to basically search directory and permissions or the file to basically read write file permissions. You know, it, it's, it's, think of it as a way to shrink policy as opposed to having one long extended line. Yep, here's another example. You know, when we define get attributes file terms, that means we're just doing a get attribute. When we do it, when we do a read inherited file terms, that means we're doing a get attribute, read, IOCTL, lock, you know, and so on and so forth. And as I indicated, M4 policy needs to be compiled. So you have those three files. You have to do a make, you know, to basically build the PP file, install the PP file, and hope stuff doesn't blow up. But more than mo most, most of the time it doesn't. You know, this is an example of the sandbox uh, uh, policy file. So we have a request. We, this is actually the most important statement. This is pretty much defines what what it is. Then the require basically indicates that this is type sandbox web underscore t, and then the attribute it's a user domain. Um, and then what permissions are we, what are we, are we allowing it to do? So this, remember, this is an allow uh, statement. We're allowing sandbox web underscore T to basically connect to Linux stream sockets. If you want to know what a, what a user domain is, you can use another command called se info. Se info will basically, if you, do, if you pass, say, se info dash uh, xa user domain, it will basically list all the user domains we currently have in uh, policy. All right, and this is an example of how we currently build policy today. So if we made changes to the sandbox underscore uh, uh, PP, we basically run make, and then it, it builds the policy file, and then we go ahead and install the .pp file. Uh, you want to talk about still? Mm -hmm. You can take it if you want. It's pretty simple. So this is the future. Um, 
As a lens policy is growing up, just like everything in life, so still is the next big thing. If uh, today you're going to struggle with M4, and then once you look at SIL, you'll be like, why didn't we think of this before? SIL was introduced uh, in uh, user space 2.4 and brings a lot of improvements. Um, I don't know if you've seen the previous talks, but uh, improvements in loading policy and basically, loading policy is pretty much the, the biggest. Um, I would let Miroslav expand on this, but he has a talk on this. Oh, we have it in the slide. Yes, performance gain, 75% speed up. Um, easier to provide your own SNX policies. You, we assign priorities to modules now. Before you, if you, if you had to uh, edit a PP file, you had to remove the original, and then if you had to edit it again, you remove the original, so you'd lose count as to how many times you've edited the file unless you go back and uh, basically keep changing that number on the top. Uh, but now with the priorities, we have the base priority. Is it it's 100? Mm, yeah, system priority yep. is 100, and if you load your own module, you will get the 400 priority. Yeah, 400 priority. Remember the name, New Common Intermediate Language, SIL. And uh, I think we have an example. Yeah, that's it. So think of SIL as an expanded PP file. Remember the PP file requires the .te, .fc, .if, and then you have to compile that. With SIL, this alone is just a module. And all you have to do is install the module. That's it. So our previous command, uh, where was it? This rule we wrote in today's fashion. We modified my sandbox, and then we had to remove the original my sandbox file. Then we had to make the file, and then we had to install the module. With SIL, we just, we could cat or echo that one line. And it's the same, and just install the module. And I pretty much explained these three modes. You have enforcing, um, which is the default. You can't debug in enforcing mode unless you're really, really good. And then permissive mode, which is the debug mode. And uh, in the early days, you'd have to put the entire system in permissive mode. Today, you could put just the domain in permissive. You don't have to put the entire. If you need to work on Apache, Instead of doing a uh, set enforce zero, you just run sc permiss sc manage permissive dash some flag and put Apache in permissive mode. And um, where can we find these logs? Uh, this involves troubleshooting. It's usually it's still the default log var log audit audit dot log. How do you pass these? You do an au search. I always put a dash i uh, because it gets depending on how many you're looking at, um, you may get a, a, a mixed output. Uh, we don't have enough, uh, we don't have an example, but you know, you guys are probably done research. So, do you guys all have the package installed? No? Um, Can you show the slides with the things that we need? Sorry? Can you show again the slides with those packages and stuff we need? Yeah. Um, <laughs> There we go. SE Tools Console will give you SE Search. Remember, your takeaway from this, SE Search. And then Policy Code uh, Utils Devel will give you all the other stuff that's needed yeah. to compile the policy. Any questions before we... Uh,
All right, I'll let Lukas uh, take over. Okay, so um, I created one a simple series. It's 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 fictive, fictive Linux demo in in your PCs and uh, computers. Sorry, and we will write the policy for it in in M4 macro language, and then we will compare it with with SIL. Uh, as Simon mentioned, SIL is still future, and I think it will be better to write it right now in M M4 and. It's, it's simple then to switch it to to, to seal. So uh, our uh, daemon will connecting to port uh, 18 to my personal block. Uh, then it will uh, lock some messages into the journal. Uh, it will uh, create a pit file uh, reading slash prod slash menu for. And then we have uh, one surprise. Okay. Uh, when I'll be too fast. Please just stop me. I, I guess before we get started, so everybody has the package installed. I mean, so there are two ways to do this. You can actually do it in real time, or Lukas will kind of give you an example on how to go through it. If you need help, I can walk around the room. Just raise your hand. Mm -hmm. They weren't on this. No, it's true. Oh, it's you didn't put, you didn't put it on. I don't have time to put it there because. Sorry. I get this. Is this possible? Yeah, I can Yeah, I can do it. There's some this, this. There's quite some dependencies. A lot of dependencies. Uh, maybe I should have a hard wire one meter. Yeah, but there's a lot of dependencies. It's what? I have a lot of dependencies. How many? I don't know. We do a DNS down and pull them down. And then just put them on the grid. It will take a lot of time. Maybe I can. I can.
afraid to do this somebody. <laughs> So anyone who needs the two packages, we have them on here. In here. That's also the essay for the tools. Yeah, and they're all the tools. Yeah, essay tools console and uh, policy for you to the All right.
screaming for the So it's apparent some of you don't have the good toys. So you're going through a dependency hell. I thought you only needed two packages. But uh, so we'll get started for those of you who have the packages. Again, this session is recorded. Um, the slides will be available. And uh, whenever you're ready. Yep. OK, so I need to move it to show slide. Okay, so one, once again, we will create the SLNX policy for a fictive Linux daemon. Uh, important thing is that it will connect to one port, then uh, log some messages into the journal, uh, create bit file reading uh, slash prod slash meminfo, and one surprise. So uh, maybe better idea is to switch to proposal and I'll write it. Okay. Can you see it, guys? Is it okay? Probably I need to make it bigger. Be better. Yep. Just control plus. Control plus. It's not working. <laughs> okay, cool. This is better. Okay, so I need to connect to virtual machine. Okay, so I have uh, this daemon called DevConf 2017 already installed in my system. Uh, we can check for the status. Okay, so it's uh, loaded but inactive. So, uh, SLNX is in permissive. Oh, we can switch it to, to enforcing. Set enforce one. Okay, uh, let's start it. Okay, and right now it's inactive and it's running. We can check that it's uh, already writing DTL journal. Okay, but what is uh, what is uh, interesting that we can run this command and check for the conf process. Yeah, cool, and. Uh, we don't have policy for 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 our service yet, so it runs uh, it runs in uh, unconfined service domain underscore t. You know, uh, right now S Linux is in enforcing mode. I can type it once more time. Yep, uh, but for this service S Linux is not in game. Why? Because we don't have policy. Uh, okay. Uh, let's okay. slides. Okay, it's here. Yep, and uh, in the workshop directory there is a uh, another subdirectory policy, and uh, open devconf te file. Cool. So 
Uh, this is some kind of template. So we had the, the policy head macro. You can call it this way. And here we are uh, declarating the the type defconf 2017 underscore t, which is a type for for domain for our process. Then we also declaring the type defconf 2017 underscore exec underscore t, uh, which is a label for binary binary uh, file for 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 defconf. And then this is a this is a macro that indicates that uh, it's the defconf 2017 underscore t is daemon, and it will run in under if it, there is a transition if if init underscore t which is a label for or domain for system d will will execute this file defconf 2017 exec underscore t. That there will be a transition to DevConf 2017 underscore T. We can, I show you with with the SE search. So let's type SE search minus T. So, sorry, where, where is the policy hello directory? And I Sorry, another problem. Uh, you you can it's it's just these few lines, so you can rewrite it. But you have it there, yeah. I've got it there. Yeah, there's a policy. Oh, come on, that's that's weird. There's also the the RP packages are also on there. All that. Okay, so do you have it? Yes, no? Okay. So I'll write. So, can I continue? Yeah. Oh, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, I need to my computer. Uh, okay, so let's type. Oh, I will. It's a search minus D minus A uh, minus S. S means a subject. Subject type. <coughs> And we will type in it underscore t. <laughs> in it underscore t. Uh, t is defconf 2017 underscore exec t. Okay, so yeah, there is there is a no defconf defconf label. So we, at first we need to load this this policy to kernel so we need to make it as simon said user share so linux 
that will make file and the name of the module will be defconf 2017pp ok maybe I can clear it and show you the command if you want to go with me ok and now we have a policy also in binary representation defconf 2017.pp yes sure Okay, can we continue? Yeah. Uh, okay, as I said, we have it in, in binary, but we need to lo load it. So the next command is semodule minus e defconf 2017.pt. Mm, oops. Okay, so again, I'll clear it and show you just the right command. If can I continue? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, cool. it normally it takes like I don't know twenty seconds to load or so. Sorry, is it normal if it takes twenty seconds to load or so? Uh, yes, because it's a very small. If yeah. you looked at the type, the the TE file, there are very few lines. So if there were like a thousand lines, then yeah, but I mean, it took like I don't know, ten to twenty seconds on my laptop to load. Mm -hmm. yeah. this command. Because you have a very because the policy file is really really small. Actually, Lukas is really lucky because <laughs> I, I gave similar workshop seven years ago, and it took two minutes. So you're saying that 20 seconds is fast? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's fast. It's not previous. Yeah? It's not. It's really, it's, it's really two, two minutes. So it's not we, have, we have, sorry guys, we are waiting. We are, we are, I, I think the comparison is really great from two minutes to 10 or 15 seconds. It, well, it's, it's, too, it's, it's not fast. Don't call it fast. It's not <laughs> from the previous day. I yeah. can say that yes. And uh, there is still big area to improvement there. Yeah? So, Thank you, Mary. Okay, uh, let's check it if our module is loaded. So I just type minus L and I will grab DevConf 2017 module. And as you can see, it's here. Okay? Uh, I want to tell you just one more thing. In the T file, there is uh, this line permissive defconf 2017 underscore T. This is uh, very useful when you are writing policy and it's useful for debugging because uh, the, uh, the SLNUX can be in enforcing mode. As you can see, it's enforcing, but just this domain will be in permissive. So it's, it's your debugging will be quicker and you will see much more AVCs, which, which, is, which is good. Okay, uh, let's move on. A quick question. Yep. If we want to have that enforcing, we need to recompile it without the permissive line? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. If you need to remove it, then recompile it. I think you can maybe you can remove it from the command line? Yes, you can. You can use manage. Semanage permissive, and this should show you the permissive types as you can see here devconf and, and TLP. Uh, this is this is this is this is a good tool, but I prefer to remove it and recompile it because, for you know, future reasons. Yeah, it's just asking because if it's permissive all the time and you want to reload it to enforcing mode. To know that it has to be recompiled without this line. Yeah. So, so the 
and false, yeah, you can, or we need to recompile. Yeah? You can so do it. You can the pairs of types. Check this. Uh, <laughs> so I use my. Basically, the better option is to, to avoid to define the permissive space and use the, the G file and just use a C manage permissive command. Permissive D. Yeah, yeah, I know, I understand. Uh, Maybe because you define this thing, you know, the module. Oh, yeah. To be honest, I cannot read it clearly because it's too huge here, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, this was a DE file, and let's move on file context file. Oh. Maybe right now I can make it smaller a little bit. Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, this is better. Okay, uh, here is the path to the binary, you see slash user slash bin slash uh, defconf2017 and here is a definition of context. So we can see that this file will have this context, uh, system U, uh, object error and the most important thing is defconf2017 underscore exec underscore t, you see. But there is always but uh, from the policy view you can use meshpad call user bin devconf 2017 uh, policy see this path uh, with the following context but if I type ls minus capital Z user bin Defconf, you see that the type is bin t, which is a, some kind of default type for slash user slash slash bin. Okay, so uh, what need what we need to do? We need to restore the context. So it will be restore con. Uh, oh come on, sorry, are we user? Okay, and there is some other stuff, but the f important for us is is this line that res uh, restore con reset it uh, label from binti to defconf 2017 exec t. Okay, so is it possible to read just on that single file? Yeah, yes, yeah. of course, yes. I just don't want to write it. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Uh, yep. Okay. So right now, uh, fi uh, context lo looks good. We have a loaded policy here, and uh, let's uh, start it again. So system control start defconf. 2017 service. Okay, let's check it with status. Okay, so uh, service is active and running, and let's check the context or domain. Okay, cool. So this is output from PS, and you can see that the uh, following daemon uh, runs in DEFCON 2017 
underscore t domain. So right now uh, we have a domain for SLinux and SLinux is in game for, for this service. Any questions? No? Okay, cool. So, uh, as I said, uh, our system right now is in enforcing mode, but this domain runs in permissive. And uh, let's check for AVCs. So I will type our search minus M AVC. Do you have the command? And we have a lot of lot of AVCs. Uh, I need to make it smaller because we cannot see it. Uh, one more probably. Okay, this is much better. So let's start with it. As you can see, there is a lot of lot of AVCs. Maybe I can type this recent. So this this will show me just uh, AVCs from past ten ten minutes. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Yep. Uh, it's output from audit, audit daemon. Who asked it? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's output from audit daemon, and it's you know it's some kind of message that Linux uh, denied some action. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but if you want the definition, it's access vector cache. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 So uh, now, thank you, Mirek. Uh, now we can describe, you know, one, one, one simply, one simply ABC. But I need to choose some, the nice one. Probably I can. Okay, cool. I want this one. So this is typical ABC. Uh, what is important that some action was denied and uh, the name of the command is here, that comes 2017, that's important for us. And the source context is, is here and the important part is this one. And basically this, this AVC says that uh, that conf 2017 underscore t domain uh, is trying to add some uh, some file called defconf 2017.pit with the following label var underscore run underscore t. So we can we can find where where it is and if you I, type. I have a question. Yep. This. This audit, the message that was audit and this like a timestamp. Can we find the actual timestamp? I know it's on logs, the audit log and this timestamp of the execution of that benign action. Yes, you can find, but but uh, uh, I don't know what what you're asking. Uh, or Paul? Uh, put the dash I flag to AU search. I think that'll do what you're asking. Uh, which one? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, dash I. Uh, I. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's fine. Yeah. And right now it's, it's, it's here. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so uh, let's find uh, where is this file. We can see it's some kind of pit file, and uh, and uh, uh, target type is var underscore run underscore t. So probably it will be 
somewhere here. Let's check the the label of for following path and it's oh sorry. Oh, come on. Yep. And you can see it. Can you see it? And it's here. You know. So probably somewhere in Varan will be our file. Yep, and it's here with with following context. And uh, also you can you can see the SE search from from the last time where I put in it T will be defconf 2017 exec exec T oh no needs to be uh, type because it's T as a transition and right now you can see that we have uh, one rule it's type transition rule that system D label that uh, in it T uh, will uh, will execute following file with, with this label, defconf 2017 exec t and process will have uh, will will has uh, defconf 2017 t uh, t uh, domain or, or type. So that, that this is this is great. What, and sorry for interrupting. Yeah. What it really means the type transition, like because of the t file. Or? Type transition. It. Well, Can explain. So okay. Uh, go ahead and run um, CTL status devconf. All right, so Sorry. the type transition, so if you look at this, um, I, I don't know if it's running or not, but anyway, so devconf uh, 2017 and the 2017 is, is basically yeah. a system D executed the file. Yeah. And then once it executed that file, I don't know why it's saying failed here. Uh, I don't know if it's running. It wasn't running. Yeah. When it executed the file, basically what happened is it, bas it transitioned uh, and became a process. Wow. Remember the, P so if I do a ps-ez, I will see, uh, if I add more flags, you'll actually see, um, um, you'll actually see the path the executable user lab system d system def comp underscore t and the type transition means that uh, in it which system d once it executed the def comp 2017 underscore exec underscore t transition to the process def comp 2017 underscore t. Thank you. So that means that if we started the, the, the daemon manually it would not have this? Exactly. Yes, exactly. So always start the daemon with the, with the service script. That kind of uh, scraps out all the other messes and helps transitions happen. And this is what that init daemon domain uh, command is? Yes. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. So any, anyway, if I have not, for example, I have some service uh, policy which not allow for something that we just already have, and yeah. then I uh, doing from the uh, system cell start service, we have transition state. But when I do it manually, we do not have this transition. Yeah, the transition will not happen. But uh, Simeon should also block this kind of operation, or not, when I do it. No, so it won't block it, but you won't get defconf <coughs> 2017 underscore okay. T. You'll get unconfined service T. Ah, okay. And then I th there's another thing we could do is, you can actually, uh, like if defconf, underscore um, exec underscore t or defconf 2017 <coughs> underscore t was to execute another file, we could block, we could just allow it to execute the file but then deny it transition. That's why you get the execute no trans. Yes, thank you very much.
bot za dziewczynę. Ja I'm struggling with your What keyboard. What are you doing? Sorry, man. I wanted to look at the your, your keyboard layout different. Yeah, but the, you need to start <laughs> it again. Oh, it wasn't running. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Start. 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 Go to the something service, and you can type it again. And okay. It's, it's here. So if you add another flag, I think it's uh, EL. Just try it. What do you want? <coughs> yep, so you see the, the user lib system. Mm -hmm. OK. You can continue. Okay, so let's move on with, with, the, with the writing. And uh, so I tried again, and when I type out search um, AVC, the easier send. So we have a lot of AVCs here, you know. Uh, let's move it more readable with audit to allow. Uh, this, this, uh, this tool is really, really dangerous. You know, because it's generate the uh, AVC rules, allow AVC uh, allow Linux rules fr from the AVCs. But uh, you need to thinking about these allow rules because you you can you can allow what you don't want to allow. <laughs> you know, and it's 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 not it's not good. Uh, yesterday, uh, my our colleague uh, Vitya has uh, has a really really nice example on on our talk. So if if you if you didn't see it's just just check it on on, on YouTube. So uh, let's check what's going on with the demon. Uh, I start with the last one. You know that we see that uh, DevConf 2017 underscore T is trying to to open and, and write to some file in in uh, Varan uh, T and its file, and we know that it's it's, it's our Pit file. So uh, let's let's create another transition that that this DevConf 2017T will 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 create this pit file, but with a different uh, type than is var run because as you can see that that we have a warning that uh, this is a base time. So and we don't want to allow the DevConf 2017 underscore T to to write to all var run. Uh, varan files because if you want to see the uh, the. Can I have a question? Yep. Why is it DevConf 2017 G and not DevConf 2017 exec T? Uh, because the uh, the exec T is uh, is a label for the for the executable binary. You see, see check I check this. User. Yeah. So the part you missed was the transition. Okay. System D executes. <coughs> exec underscore t to give sorry. you devconf 2017 underscore t. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm you see? It's yeah, here. Okay, yeah, it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's again with the SC search. Yeah, you're observant. <laughs> you see? It's, it's here. Okay? Cool. Yeah. Can you show this audit uh, to our audience? Yep. Of course. Okay, so the thing is that we have some uh, you know, our something, our something, but maybe when we do our dev T var run file, should fix everything regarding this process <coughs> or not? Um, technically, it should, but that's again. So remember, in the beginning of my talk, the SE in SE Linux is security enhanced. So every time you think about adding something. Ask yourself what would happen. So yes, you can go ahead and, and allow it to write to var run t, but if you look at all the files that are listed under var run t, all the other pit files, that would mean devconf 2017 underscore t, if somebody hacked it, they would be able to see the pit file for Apache. Because it lives in var run t. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool, thank you. So, uh, so what, what we want, 
uh, we want to label the this file uh, var and fconf bit file we want it to label different than than is than is a base time a base type uh, warranty so let's do it in our policy so it's here policy okay policy defconf te okay so we have a definition for daemon and executable binary and let's add type defconf 2017 var run t okay and we also need this i will explain it to you files with file defconf 2017 Okay, do you have it in, in, in your TE file? Maybe I can wait a little bit. <coughs> okay, can we continue? Okay, so... This, this macro in and it's something similar like this that that uh, we just add some uh, uh, some, some mm -hmm. rules and, and add it to pit file attribute this this warranty but uh, for you it's for you it's important just write to these lines when you start writing policy and you can check in our git uh, our github repo that uh, what exactly means this you just grab it in base in in, in base uh, in base branch, you know, git branch. So I think that without these five bit files, it also will be not working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Need, right uh, now, right now we just uh, define the type. Nothing okay. else. Just define the type. Okay. okay. Uh, but let's create the the interaction or or allow rules. So. Uh, we have uh, again some macro macro manage files pattern I, I will write it and then I explain it okay 2017 the conf No, thank you. Okay, guys, uh, do you have it? No? Yes? Okay, cool. So, uh, let's check uh, this manage files pattern in, in our repo, and I show you where you can find these patterns. It's, it's, it's really useful. So, uh, but where is the repo? So just one moment, I create the. Huh? Yes, yes, I know, but I need to find it. RPM dash can go as in the next place in the alphabet. 
Okay, can you see it or? Oh, it's, it's too small. Uh, Windows, layout, okay. Scroll plus minus works in Terminator. What? Cool. Okay, so uh, this is a raw, raw height, uh, base branch. I can show you. You see, it's it's here, rawhide branch. And in rawhide branch, we have a policy directory, and in policy directory there is a support file, and you see here the patterns. And we want the file patterns. Sorry, SPT. And I write. It's we can we can close this. And I write. The code de. Sorry. We write this manage files pattern, yeah. And we can find it here. Okay, so I hope guys that you can see it. It's here. Uh, here is that uh, manage files pattern, and here is the hello rules. And this is a variable. This is the, the this is the first variable. In a, in our case, it's it's this one. This is the second variable and also the the last one. You know, and now you can see the hello rules. So hello devconf domain. Uh, devconf, devconf domain will will can uh, read and write. Uh, direct <coughs> permissions for DEFCON warranty. You know, uh, these, these permissions can you find here, but it's pretty simple to, to read it without, without know this file. So it's, so it's here, where is read write, here read write, you know. So, so DEFCONF 2017 can open, read, get attribute, log, search, and at, at see this. Okay, so this is important. And it's it's good to check these these files in support, you know, file patterns, and and object object perm sets. It's 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 here. Okay, the the last macro, this one, is something really similar to this one, and with L, uh, and it tells as Linux that that this domain can create a file. With following label in uh, var run, you know it's it's our it's path for for pit files. So let's uh, let's recompile it. Okay, we have it and twenty seconds, but okay. So uh, let's let's remove this file. Uh, because we want that the daemon will create the, the new file and let's start it. So, start. okay, the service is running, cool, and let's check the, the, the context of, of file. We have it here and ls minus z grab. And as you can see, that the context right now is DevConf warranty, not just warranty. 
So this is an example of, of uh, transition. Uh, can you please uh, give Okay, uh, let's let's move on. So uh, right now we can again run uh, our search, and we don't see any any uh, any record related to var run. Yes, we see some. Uh, we see uh, syslogd var run, but it's something totally different right now. Okay, so. Any questions? Yeah, mm, sorry. Uh, can you please cut the TE file with some typo? I'm not sure where. Sorry? I can't find a typo where it is. If you get just cut the TE file, it's just something. It's just syntax error, probably. Not that dangerous. Now we have the, the, the more all that from uh, rules to make, yeah? Just a just, just second. We see the conf te. It's for you and the question was that uh, we enable this, this big file uh, to support to support file transition. But now <laughs> yeah. when we are doing the same, uh, um, we are uh, doing again audit to allow. Mm -hmm. We see that we need to enable more things. Yeah. 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 This is just one part of it. You know, just one action. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's okay? Yeah, we found the first one. <laughs> okay, okay, so. So this allows the, the, the binary to create any file in a var, var RAM and add this. Yes, if yes. If they just as the, the disable. Yeah, if, if, if a binary uh, in domain that 2017 will create a file, it, it, it needs to be a file. Because it's different, just just file. The the label will be defcon 2017 var and t. No, it could be the bit file only. Five bit file, yeah. No. Right or no? It can be any any That's file. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. Because I'm thinking that when we have five bit files, it only allows for the bit files in this particular var run t. No, no, it's just name uh, of the of the macro. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's check the remaining remaining rules. Where it is? It's it's here. Okay, cool. So uh, what is interesting next? So uh, I told you that the demon is trying to to write some some records to journal, and we see uh, ABCs 
likes. Uh, DevCon 2017 is trying to read a uh, link file labeled dev, dev, uh, devlog t right to some socket. And there is uh, and there is also this rule. So devlong 2017 is, is uh, searching in directory labeled as syslog d var and t. Okay? So, what now? We can... Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, we, we need to do one, one more thing with the, with the PID file. Thank you, Simon, for reminder. Uh, we did we didn't uh, add record also here, you know, because right now the the label is good because the daemon will create it. But when I uh, when I uh, run uh, restorecon, the restorecon will will uh, label it back to varan because we don't have specified it here. So let's do it. I just copy this one. Okay, and type it. And I need to change the context and it will be var run. Okay, so just type it, please. Uh, can I continue? No. No? No? Okay. So we'll know we have to rebuild the whole PP file? Yeah. I don't want to do it. Sorry? No, 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 no. <laughs> Better? <laughs> yeah, it's not necessary. It's just for better reading for me. Okay, can I continue? Because okay, so I will compile it. Sorry. Uh, okay, and I see my use of PP. Okay, uh, thank you, Simon. But let's 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 move on because you know we will be out of time. Okay, so guys, ch check check these uh, rules, mainly these two related to devlog and and syslog varan t. Okay, uh, in the beginning I told you that uh, this demon will write something to to journal. So. Uh, Maybe yes, existing some 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 macro for for writing to to syslog, you know. So let's check the let's check the uh, again the policy. And basically, the 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 easiest thing is just the grab devlogt file. Okay, and and we and we have some some results. Uh, okay, in you see that in policy module system logging dot t this type is de is defined. But let's check the let's check the uh, interface file. So policy modules system logging interface file. Okay, so and there is a lot of lot of lines, but uh, you can see. You can see the names. 
Okay, so let's find something similar. I don't know, syslog or. And somewhere here, you find this one that the macro called logging sent syslog message. And this is probably our macro, what we need. But as you see the body of the macro, so you see that there is again some variable and this variable, this type, is, is will be part of syslog client type. Uh, syslog client type is attribute, not the type. And uh, basically, uh, this is just for, for easiest reading the, the, the policy that one attribute can, conti can contain uh, more types. Okay, so and, and you can let's... Yes, for example, is this log client type? So say info is another cool tool. X8 syslog client type. You see, and here is the here is the list of of domains which can create uh, which can uh, send messages to syslog. So it's huge list. But let's check it. Let's check it where is this uh, type defined and it will be defined in logging.t but I can't grab it grab oh grab it will be here so policy module system logging de and it's syslog uh, how it is just here and it, and you can see that this is all the allow rules for the for the attribute syslog client type so if we uh, if we use uh, the macro uh, uh, logging send syslog file we allow defconf uh, 2017 domain all these allow rules you see so this is a macro for uh, writing to syslog. So let's let's allow it. Uh, of course, sorry. The e. And here is the again name of the macro. It's logging send syslog message. So logging send syslog message. Okay, do you have it? Can I continue? No? Okay, I'll wait. Okay, can I continue? Okay. So let's make it, uh, let's compile it. Okay, and load it. Okay, so it's loaded. We again start the daemon, check the status, it's running, and again let's find our AVCs. Oh, what's up? The daemon is running, and that's weird. Okay, that's it's it's good for us because right now the demon can write can can write to 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 syslog, okay. But I don't know why I don't see the another. Maybe I need to wait a little bit because it's writing, and there is some kind of I don't know. I don't know. 
papers. You see that this is a journal and it's, it's writing. And this is, this is probably the 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 main point of of uh, of writing policy that you need to find and understand the, the rules, and then you need to find in in our repo and find the proper uh, find the proper macro for it. And if the macro does not exist, for example, you need to just write the you know the hello rule. But but this is it. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> to be honest, we are out of time, so I'll just continue with the slides. So sorry, but uh, this this is how look the whole policy for the demon. That you know, uh, this this we know. Okay, okay. So uh, previously, I told the demon is connecting to TCP port, logging messages, writing pid file, and reading uh, map info. You know, so. Here is the LO rules. So this is a LO rule for uh, read uh, system state. It's for uh, slash prod slash meminfo. This is for connecting to HTTP port. And and that's it. To be honest, this is uh, not the actual policy. So please don't check on this 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 rule, LO rule. Okay. So if we will continue with the checking the AVCs from audit to hello, you will just append the following uh, macros. And this is an example from a file context file. So this is uh, for binary and this is for pit file right now. And uh, this, is, this is our future. This is uh, the same policy in, in seal and you don't see any macros. So you just write the low rules, and in the end you will uh, create the context for, for the files. Okay. So yeah. So, want, uh, yeah, so the, yeah, so the takeaway from this is, we had three files: type enforcement, file context, interface file. With SIL, it's just one module. And remember how you are starting and loading the service each time. So once you type this all out. I'm not a typist, but if you, if you can type this all out and then just run SC module devconf 2017.sil, that's it. No more compiling, yeah. no more. Yeah. And it's faster, definitely. Okay, uh, I'll show you the surprise. Uh, if you add a hack parameter in the service file, you know. It will uh, it will copy your etc shadow to temp hex. So who who check the code before the compile it? Oh, uh, good, good for you guys. I was not using. Uh, <laughs> I don't have etc shadow anymore. Yeah, <laughs> cool. But uh, what is important that we don't have right now. We don't have a rule for you know uh, reading etc shadow. Right now, as you can see, if you type etc search, there is there is a no rule. So. Uh, you can see that right now you have a working you have a working policy for this and there will be some I don't know evil code and it, it won't be executed because you don't have the LO rule. So this is one of the beauties of SC Linux. Okay. So uh yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about SC policy generate. Uh, you don't uh, you don't need to uh, write these these macros uh, by hand as as we did, but I want to show you how to do it to to understand it. But uh, you can use uh, SC policy generate and it will help you with with lot of rules. So if, if you're interested in writing policy, definitely ch check this check this. We don't have time for it right now, so sorry. And yeah, this is the this is a policy gener generated also from 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 set policy generate and I uh, by hand some rules. One, one, there. Question, one question regarding yeah. this slide. Can you, why is permissive that count t? We just uh, yeah this, because this is like a, this built in. So, sorry. This is like a, this built in permissive or not? Uh, if if you compile this policy, yeah. the def conf. Uh, underscore t will be in permissive domains. 
So even if the S, S Linux will be uh, in enforcing mode on the system, yeah, this will be this domain will be in in permissive. So so policy for this will not be enforced, just just lock to to audit audit demon uh, audit lock. Okay. Uh, we have also local modifications and using the semenage. I, I show it to you. I show it. Uh, using the semenage command, you just uh, label just some ports, label objects, so you don't need to write the policy for it. If if you are writing some some policy or have some issues related to SC Linux, uh, just uh, check semenage semenage command. You know, for example, uh, I, I should have examples here. Yes, I have it here. Uh, do you see it? It's it's in grey. Sorry for that, but. If you can see that I grab the all 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 uh, all labels labels la related to uh, mysql.t, you see, and also I uh, grab all ports related to mysql port t. So you know that uh, all TCP port with these numbers has following following label in from SNS point of view. So remember the SC manage tool. And also here is some examples how I can add a port. For example, uh, I want uh, I want from Apache to start binding on port uh, 82, not 80 or 81, for example. So uh, I just uh, add following command, and the SNX will label the TCP port 82 with the with the following label: HTTP port HTTP port T. You know, so you don't need to write a policy or anything. It's just your local modification, and you will fix it with SC manage. And and it's it's yes, yes, and yes. And this is also for F context. So if you want to label some uh, some object, some directory file, or something like that, uh, you just switch from port to F context. So is, this is really helpful for a lot of issues related to SLNs on your desktop systems. Yes, because uh, every port uh, ha has just one 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 label. Okay. So other than recompile policy? Uh, no, you need to allow rule for, for example, two demons need to have the same rule that they can connect or bind to uh, to the port with this label. Yeah, and, and I mean, there's another way to do that. You can modify the original port, but that, uh, it changed the. Yeah, but how far do you want to go? So, you know, how bad does MySQL need to use a port that's already in use, you know? So if, say, MySQL needs to use port 443, it's never going to happen. So, and we know that Apache uses 443. So you could modify, as long as you're not running Apache on your system, you could probably modify and have, give Apache another port to free up 443 and then assign it to MySQL. But then the question is... We just know that Apache uses 443, but we don't know what other services you have on your system that are also using 443. So use the unassigned ports if you really need to uh, uh, use a free port. Yeah. And uh, that's all. It was a little bit confusing, sorry, and we had problems with, with, with Wi-Fi, so... So uh, I, I'll put this slide somewhere publicly and you can, you can uh, see it on my Twitter or, or try this, I believe it should work, to be honest. I, I tried yesterday. So it works, yeah. It works? Right? Cool. <coughs> so if you have any question, just send me an email, I should have it somewhere. Okay, now that's the last slide. Key takeaway, practice, practice, practice. Yeah. <laughs> That's always. That's always.